Hello, I am super pumped. How is everyone doing tonight? It has been a pretty great week and looking forward to this interview after the last amazing interview with Angel Ruiz. Tonight, I am very happy and excited to have this conversation and to bring to you Vincent Rutley. Um, I got to meet him recently and just was amazed by everything about this man. So he agreed to come on and share some things with you. So let's jump in. All right, I'm just gonna see if I can invite you here. Let me see here. All right. Oh, my sweetie pie is on here too. Hi, babe. Hello. There you are. How's it going? Yeah. What's happening? What's happening? I am like the weather was great, so I'm at the park. Oh, that's so awesome. Let me just go on out here and just get some fresh air while I get on with my girl. That's wonderful. Is she nearby? She can come and say hi. <laughs> oh, no, no, she's not nearby. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, she, she decided to let me let me slide in and do my thing tonight, so she's chilling. Okay. What's up, Bill? What's up? Well, thank you for joining us here. I am so grateful. I mean, you have been since the moment I met you before I even got to meet you in person, just very energetic, giving, caring, thoughtful, just wanting to include everyone. So um, I see that's just continuing even after um, congratulations on the wrap, by the way. Um, how did thank the last you. night of, of shooting go for you? The last night was amazing. We, uh, you know, it rained us out. A couple of weeks ago, and uh, we just really couldn't get the last scene the way we envisioned it. And uh, we tried like a couple of options, like try to use the rain to end the scene. And it was like, we looked at the footage and was like, no, no, we got to We got to go back. Everybody agreed to come back. Everybody was excited to come back. And uh, I mean, what an amazing team. What an amazing crew that was. So they made it easy. They made it fun. And uh, we got it perfectly. We even changed location a little bit. Um, you'll uh -oh. you know. Uh oh. You'll, you'll okay, understand. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew where you guys set up. I, I bailed on you that night. I, I felt bad for leaving you. I was in pain and misery, and I, I left on oh. you that last night. But you didn't bail on us at all. You did not bail on us at all. You were awesome. Well, you I appreciate awesome. everything, and and I want to know, like, how was it? I I love not only being there but to be able to see like that was your directorial debut for this yeah. kind of setting right so yeah. go ahead and how did how was that experience for you well first of all the team you andrew was uh patrick jeffrey everybody made it i would i would say it wasn't a normal directorial debut because normally when it's your first time directing on film it's a very low budget independent project. You're wearing three, four, five, sometimes six different hats. Oh, you got to produce, you have to direct, you have to run the camera, you have to do the lighting. Yeah. So for me to be able to come in and have a full crew, a full team, um, extra pair of eyes and hands and ears everywhere, everybody on that team made it so amazing. Um, as I don't know if I'd share with you, but coming from the stage play world, directing and stage plays for over 10 years plus to be able to go to film it was just like you know it was a lot of training a lot of preparation um that happened back home in detroit i was groomed for it i was ready for it um i think the only thing that would have stopped me from doing it um uh, the right way would have been myself would have been my own mm. um confidence and things like that but with that team, I mean, that team, you guys spoiled me. You really made it easy. You made it simple. Um, and it was the greatest. It was, a, it was a dream come true, to be honest with you. It was a dream come true. I you enjoyed every really, day. You guys really did put together uh, like a dream team there on set. Yeah. So um, it was my first time getting to meet everyone in person. I think the only person I had spoken to even before that was Cameron. Um, so just, yeah, you guys... Whoever was in charge of putting that whole thing together obviously did it very well. So good yeah. job on that. That's for sure. Thank um, you. I, I do want to jump back a little bit just to give people a little bit um, more of a feel as far as 
your background. I know you said you got into acting in about, around the ninth grade. And just looking over your stuff, man, you've done a ton of stuff, like just acting, directing, writing, writing music, I believe, even all of that. So kind of tell us a little bit about that, your passion behind how that began and where you started. Absolutely. Um, I'm, a, I'm the fourth oldest of five boys. Grew up in, in a very active family. Um, family of faith. And my oldest brother, Ryan, shout out to you, Ryan Ruby, my guy. He was doing stage plays in junior high and I was in elementary. And I saw him do some local urban theater. And when I tell you, Mel, this guy is amazing. And I saw him at like the age of 13, 14, 15 doing it. And I was like, that is what I want to do. Um, mm -hmm. Then he went on to high school and he did the, the play. Have you heard of The Wiz? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So you have The Wizard of Oz, then you have the musical side, The Wiz, and he played mm -hmm. the, the, the Tin Man in high school of The Wiz. And he just blew the city away. But wow. I was his biggest fan. And I was like, dude, I, if I can get on stage, I know I could do that. And I waited because he's about five years older than me. So I waited a few years and I got to high school. And then they decided not to do the play anymore, The Wiz. And I was like, I was crushed. I almost cried. But he sparked something in me that I was like, you know what? This is what I want to do. I was playing football at the time. And I remember coming back after the summer. And um, I had a practice with the football team. And the coach was like, you can't work. You can't do extracurricular activities. You have to only play football. And I sat there and I asked myself, I said, do I see myself doing football for a living? Do I see myself doing that after high school? And as much as I loved football, I couldn't. I said, I can't see myself doing this afterwards. Now, acting on the other hand, I can. So I made my decision in 10th grade. No more football. It's, it's acting from here on out. My, my, my eyes were set. I was bit by the bug. And from there, it was just, it was all drama. It was all stage. Um, that was, if that's I really impressive, like like yeah. at that age to be able to look forward and and to really look. Okay, what is it? I want. What direction do I want to go with my life at in the tenth right. grade? Like that's pretty powerful, right there. That that kind of yeah. really goes to show the kind of person that you are, right there. That's that's very impressive. I know tenth grade. Absolutely. I was flipping burgers. I mean, I got back after ninth grade, grade summer, and I was smaller, slower, and I wasn't as strong as everybody on the team as I was in junior high. Junior high, I was. I was pretty good at football. Come 10th grade, it was like, y'all, y'all getting bigger. Y'all getting faster. <laughs> and I didn't get my growth spurt until after I graduated. Oh, so wow. I was like 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five in high school. I was like a little fart. But I knew on stage I felt like a giant. And I was able mm. – I was at home on stage. Mm. So that was it for me. That was that was it. I yeah. love that. So, so you – you progressed into, we went through high school, graduated in, in college, you pr pursued it. And then also in the local community, you really hit it hard. When did you start writing and like produce, like, uh, I forget which one it was. Uh, you did a couple right off the bat, like just took off the bat. You wrote, produced, directed, and starred in. Like, how did that happen? Well, shout out to my parents. Um, anybody that grows up in church, that's like a PK, which is a preacher's kid. They know in church, you get your hands in everything, right? Like you're ushering, you're singing, you're directing the choir, you're doing some media stuff. You're doing a little bit of everything. My parents saw my gift at 10th at grade, and they gave me a chance to take over the drama team at the age of 17. And that was all of the, 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 the practice. I was able to really perfect my gift. Um, I did a lot. I wrote all of the skits and all of the church plays and I directed them all. I produced them all at like 17. Right. So I had a chance to really stretch out. Now, even though, you know, church actors are different than urban actors, mm -hmm. you know, they're not professional. So that gave me even more of a training. I got to, I had to be patient. I had to be really attentive to the church actors because I can't scream at you the way I can scream at a professional actor because this is not what you do for a living. I can't You're just you scream at anyone. Sure. <laughs> yes. So I, I couldn't fuss at those guys, right? I, I had to be really 
patient and really kind and really, I don't want nobody going back to tell my mom and dad, oh, he's, he fussed at us in rehearsal. So I, I, I really had a great balance of teaching, writing, directing, and producing starting at about 17. And then um, once I graduated high school, I just acted in as many plays as I could. I wanted to learn the industry. I wanted to learn industry standards. I wanted to learn the lingo. I wanted to learn what does it feel like to be on a professional set and what does it feel like to be on a, a very unprofessional set? What do I take with me, the things that I can use, that I can use as do's, and what do I take with me, the things I can use as don'ts? And I learned really young from other directors' mistakes and from their strong, uh, from their strengths what would work for me. So I did about five, six years in the industry um, in Detroit in the circuit. That, that really stood lot. out to me. And I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought me back to that because I, I wanted to make that point with you. I don't think I made it to you in person is I really noticed while you were on set. Um, and, and I know people can get overwhelmed in situations, especially like if it's their first, but I never, I never felt that from you. And you took so much time not in a dragging out sense, but you took the time necessary to convey your your um, vision to the actors yeah. and to everyone there. And and you you did you were able to 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 describe it to the actor, and it was like okay, and that's that's the way I'm going to look at it from an actor's point of view. And like it just the tips and everything that you were giving, and and it just really really helped you. You painted that picture for everyone. So amazing job at that. You did a, a superb job. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. It's a lot easier when you're an actor first. In turn, then you turn into a director. Is that your boy, Cam? That's a good point. Yeah, he's like, uh-oh, who let you two in here? Uh-oh. <laughs> What's up, Cameron? Yeah, I was, I was blessed to get a lot of training. I had um a few mentors back home in Detroit that really took their time with me. And that was one thing that I wanted to be known for. I wanted to be known for making sure that your experience on set with the Best experience. Something keep getting me is crazy. Oh, no, Something. I'm laughing because Cameron's talking. Cameron's doing Cameron. He's like, he told me to stop picking my nose a lot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Cameron is amazing. Cameron is a nut. He is. Very he gives amazing. energy, that's for sure. Just gives everywhere. energy. Gives energy. But I thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I, I try to pride myself on making sure I'm connected and taking my time before we got on set to build those relationships with each and individual actor mm -hmm. and say every connection with these guys is different, but as long as I have a connection with every actor, we'll be good. Yeah. And that worked. Yeah, it worked you definitely connected. You connected with everyone there. So yeah, very well, very well done. Thank um, you. Man. I do. I want to jump in. So, so here you are, you're pursuing, you're asking yourself all the right questions to be able to go down the path that you want to feel what's in your heart, feel what's right for you. And then, you know, there might be a, a gap in there that I might be missing. Feel free to, to jump in there. But then, um, you know, was it 2011? Is that when your accident happened? Yeah. Um, yep. So so what happened there? Like, what was going on in your life? What happened there? Describe the process and how, what, what kind of impact that such a, such a um, catastrophic accident had on your life? Yeah. It was an amazing season. I had just got done doing five, six years in Detroit, um, local theater, learned everything I could. Mm -hmm. I had just written and produced my very first urbanized stage play, which was, for me, considered professional because it was outside of the church. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was, a, it was, it was huge. Um, everybody in the city supported it. It was great. We sold out the first weekend, about four shows. It was jam-packed, amazing actors. I was doing stand-up comedy at the time. Um, and I, uh, I was getting ready I to put that. that. Yeah, it was it was fun. I was getting ready to put the stage play um on the road. I had just um proposed to my fiance, and three weeks after I proposed to her, getting ready to go on tour, loving the stand up community, stand up comedy. I got into the accident that um it was a life changing, obviously, but. I truly feel like that accident easily, easily could have took my life. Um, the way that the truck was hit, the angle, you know, the, the, the amount of speed and force that was used for the accident to actually happen, how my body flew from the driver's seat to the, the, to the passenger side and my head busted against the dashboard. 
through everything that happened in that accident, I was not supposed to make it. The doctors really weren't sure if this guy was going to come out of this thing. And then once they realized that I was um, healthy enough to breathe on my own and that I was going to live, the first thing they told my family was, he's alive, but he's going to be a vegetable. Mm. He's not going to be wow. able to do anything for himself. No independence, no shoulder movement, definitely no arm movement, no hand movement. You know, he won't walk again. And if he does walk again, which is a very slim chance, he'll get movement and feeling back within the first year. Mm -hmm. I didn't get feeling in my lower extremities until year four and a half. Wow. Wow. So uh, once again, full circle, going back to being a family of faith, immediately my family was like, we don't receive this and we're not going to let Vince receive this. Um, they kept away a lot of people in the beginning. They had to uh, put me on the private list in the hospital mm -hmm. just so that I didn't get bombarded with a lot of friends coming in there, sobbing over me yeah. as if I was already Ooh. dead and I wasn't. Yeah. Very smart move. Very smart. Yeah, my mom, my mom was like, no, we, we have to, because we had visitors just popping up in my room and they were like, yeah. well, who, is, who, who are you? And it, if, you, if, if anybody would have seen me in that state, it, it would have made them feel like, yo, he might not make it out of this. You know, it was really and then bad. You see that. Yeah. You see not only their reaction, but also the, the reflection of you in their eyes is, is a powerful thing. Yeah, absolutely. And my, um, and I, I was so grateful for my mom and dad for doing that. Um, it wasn't because I was a celebrity and they didn't want, you know, fans coming. It wasn't like it was, I had a lot of people that I was connected to at that time. Um, and they were on Facebook like, yo, Vince is an accident. What happened? How is it? You know, how serious is it? They were really, really scared and they didn't even see me. So imagine if they had saw me with tubes everywhere and I had a halo on my neck. So just to briefly tell how the accident happened, um, I wasn't drunk. It wasn't nothing like that. But um, my baby brother had an issue with the car that he was driving at that time. And um, the battery would drain because the... Um, the alternator was going out. So alternators drained the batteries. Yeah. So he's literally on the highway mail and then I've the car just powered out. You've been there. It's crazy, right? So he's on the highway and just, he pulls over to the side of the highway, calls me and says, hey man, look, I need you to come and jump this car right quick. It's acting crazy. The battery's drained. So I'm like, oh, I'm 10 minutes away from where you are. I pull up behind him on the side of the highway. We assess the situation and the location where everything at. And I said, okay, look, when traffic clears, I mean, this is I-75, one of the busiest highways in Michigan. Mm -hmm. I said, when traffic clear, I'll pull out from behind you, and I'll pull out in the middle of the highway, and I'll turn, and I'll face wow. you on the side of the highway. That way I can jump it, and then we can pull out. Um, and traffic cleared up. Like, he was like, it's clear. Go, go. So I don't put my seatbelt back on because it's like, you know, this is the quick little routine, little, you know, it's nothing. So I go out to the, the fast lane, which is the furthest out, so I can get ready to make my turn. And I tell you, this pickup truck was coming off the exit because we didn't see him. Mm. He was going about 85, and he was booking it. So as soon as I was turning to face the side of the highway, it was the perfect timing for a disaster. Yeah. And they hit me right in the middle of my pickup truck. And... Mm. You see the pictures, it looks like my pickup truck was split in half. You can see straight down the middle of it. The gas tank flew off. Um, once again, I flew from the driver's side to the passenger side. I bust my head on the windshield. But when I hit my head, my neck snapped and my spinal cord uh, broke immediately. And that's what caused the paralysis. That's what caused me to be a very strong individual to being a quadriplegic with no movement in my body whatsoever at the drop of two seconds. And I didn't see it coming. So when I got hit, when my head hit the dashboard, it knocked me out immediately. And um, I didn't remember anything. I didn't remember the sound from the, from the, um, the car coming. I didn't see the lights. I just woke up in the hospital and they were like, you're paralyzed. And my fiance, was standing right there by the um by the bed. She was on one side and my brother was on the other side and they 
explain what happened. And um, I don't know. It, it was my faith just turned on. It just activated really strong. And immediately I was like, you know, I'll be up. This is going to be a testimony. This is going to be a, a miracle. I'm going to be a miracle. And from that day, it's been 10 years. Every day I wake up, I'm trying to ask, to ask the Lord, is this is today the day? And um, I think I'm so confident and so happy and so I just have so much joy because, first of all, I'm alive. Like, you're talking to a guy that they should be saying, R.I.P., rest in peace to Vincent Redley. Ten years, you were on your way, brother. You were, you were, you were an amazing talent. They should be saying that right now. And I'm here, right? Like, you're not ready. I don't, rest, my, man. I don't have my full body. I don't have my full movement yet. But I have my mind. I have my personality. My personality never changed. The doctors thought I had brain damage. And my mom was like, "No, he's just silly like that. Like, he's a goofball. Like, he's crazy." <laughs> and here's, here's, talking jokes. here's yeah here's one thing like you can i can see it in every every time you talk everything you do all of your posts i hear it and i hear the vision that your parents had and how they knew that they needed to protect you and it it, it comes back to everyone in the way that you talk because how you said i don't have full movement yet and every time you see, I see that so often in your post and every time I'm like, yes, yes, because I know, I know one day you'll be there because you know it. And so that is so powerful. And if that can be instilled to everyone or anyone, one person, just that belief of, of moving forward, um, man, that's just so powerful. And thank you for doing that because every time you remind me to, to have that vision and to hold on to that and to hold that faith. So yeah. you're awesome, and and Cameron says you still got your looks, <laughs> still still there poking and saying hey. Ain't nobody. I'm not reading any of his comments until after we're done. <laughs> None of his. Anybody else is, I'll read their comments, but not Cameron's. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I love so that. Guy. That that's Thank so you. strong and that's so powerful. And and how like what was it? Because then that was so 2011, and then by 2014, you were back on stage doing your thing. Yeah. How did you get there? Like, what was that process? And, um, you know, what, what was calling you to the stage? Was there a specific thing that you're like, I need to do this, I need to do that? Or was it just being grateful every day, like you said? So that, that was a, um, that's a great question. And that was a really interesting part of my journey. Anybody can imagine, anybody going from regular life to quadriplegic, the thought process, it was all mental. At that point, it was like, wow, I had to make up my mind from day one. I had to decide what kind of person I'm going to be going through this process. I don't know how long I'm going to be down. I have no idea. First of all, my wife married me in the hospital. So that. I love her so much. <laughs> that part gets me every time. Um, anybody else would have left anybody and realistically so like i would have understood right for 25 or 26 who wants to just accept this type of challenge but she said i'm with you i'm in this thing with you um we're gonna go through this together and that sparked something in me that said i'm alive i'm going to live i'm alive i'm going to live that was it and from that point it was all about, all about healing and getting stronger um, I knew that I was going to eventually get back to the arts, but I didn't have a plan to do it in the chair. I told myself, once I get strong enough and once the healing takes place and the strength to come, when I get back on my feet, I am going to get back into all the things I used to do. And that was my plan. 2014 came around. I had been through therapy for two and a half years. I had been married for two and a half years to the love of my life. Um, life wasn't perfect, but I was, I was in a good place. I was in a great place. And I started to write again. Mm. Um, I fell in love with writing all over again. And I wrote a full script on my iPhone at the time because I didn't have the hand functions to do anything else. So I wrote the script on my iPhone with my thumbs. Yeah, wow. That's when the iPhone was really small. I had a really tiny yeah. little um, wrote the script, fell in love with it, showed it to my wife, and my wife supported me 
and putting this play on. You're talking about thousands of dollars, right? Like she's like, this is what you're called to do. I'm going to support you. And that made everything amazing. That just made my, it, it reminded me that I had purpose. My disability did not change my identity. I loved acting. I love stand-up comedy. I love writing before the accident. So now I'm just a wheelchair actor. I'm a wheelchair writer. It's just, it's not who I am. It's just how I get around. So I wrote this play called The Street Corner. Amazing cast. Um, casted the whole play. And the main character was a homeless man named Russ that lived on the main streets of Detroit. And he was homeless and he had a, a crew of homeless people with him. And their territory, per se, was at the park on the street corner. Mm -hmm. And a drug lord in the city wanted to come and take over this street corner. And the question was, is this homeless guy going to back down? Or is he going to fight for his territory because this is his home? Mm -hmm. And along the journey, he meets three strangers. He's a homeless guy. And he encourages them and inspires them and shares his story. And they're like, we never thought we could learn so much from a homeless guy. So he's, he's changing lives and he's fighting for his territory. I casted this for an amazing actor out of Detroit, Eric Dion. My brother, Eric Dion, um, singer, great talent. And the more I worked on the pre-production, the more I worked on the development of this script, Mel, I keep hearing in the back of my head, Vince, you know you're supposed to play this homeless guy. And I'm like, I'm waving it off like I'm waving this fly off right now. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's not the plan. It wasn't that I wasn't confident in acting. I still didn't have the strength of my diaphragm. Mm -hmm. um, my core was really weak. I couldn't hold myself up that good. Um, it, it was just a lot of factors that made me feel like I wasn't ready. And I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. I could not sleep. And one night... I turned to my amazing, beautiful wife, Reese. Shout out to my wife, Reese. I love you, baby. That's my baby. Oh, amazing, amazing woman, man. And I looked at her and I said, I, I, I can't get this out of my spirit, but I'm supposed to play that, that lead character. And I didn't want to. That, that was the thing. Some people are like, I wrote it. You're not doing it right. I'm going to do it myself. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to take the stage yet. <laughs> But there was something was inside me that said, you're called to this. You're not supposed to wait until you get out the chair. Mm. You're supposed to do it and touch as many people in the chair as you possibly can. Because once you get out the chair, your connection with people won't be the same. Mm. And I realized mm. that being in the wheelchair was not my punishment. It was not, oh, I did something to deserve it. It was not, oh, God doesn't love me. It's my assignment. Mm. This is my assignment. I am, I am in this chair because God has a plan for me in the chair. My wife, she prayed because she's a woman of faith too. And you know what God told her, Mel, when I was in the hospital? Mm. And this gave her peace and it gave me peace. He said, I am going to take Vincent places in the wheelchair that I could not take him on his feet. I'm supposed to be here. I don't know how long. It is it, not the most favorable life, right? It's not the most desirable life. But I was able to connect with people in a different way, in the ways that I could not on my feet. I had never been through anything before my chair accident. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I had never. Mm -hmm. I've been to the hospital once, um, wow. and that was as a baby. But I had never gone through trauma. I had never gone through crisis. So when people share their stories, it wasn't that I didn't have a heart to sympathize. I didn't know how to sympathize because mm -hmm. I had never been through anything. So not that the accident had happened. It changed my purpose, not my identity, but it changed my purpose. And I was able to, 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 to humble myself and call my friend and say, hey, man, look, you're an amazing actor. But this is an assignment that I should be taking on. I'm hearing this, and I can't be disobedient to what I'm feeling. I have to do this role. I love you. I hate to pull you out, and I paid him for his time. 
I wanted to be, I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to have that type of character. I paid him for his time. I took on the role and it's out on DVD now. Um, well, not on DVD, but on um, streaming platform. It's on One Guy TV Network, The Street Corner by Vincent Relly. Okay. Amazing. I saw, I saw the, the trailer for it. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I had a blast. I had a blast and it just gave me this confidence that said, you know what? You can do whatever you want to do in this chair. You can do whatever you're supposed to do, whatever you're called to do in the chair. You can do it. You just have to know that feeling sorry for yourself is not going to help. And there will be people that's going to be inspired. I'm not supposed to touch everybody. Everybody in the world is not going to fall in love with my story or my work or my creativity. But the people that are, are the people that's supposed to. And from that day, I was back to doing what I love to do. I got back to stand-up comedy. I got back to writing music. I released two singles, two music singles in 2018 and 2019. And stage plays, and now I'm doing film. Like, who yeah. would have thought? Like, yeah. who would have thought? Who would have thought Vince going places in his chair that he couldn't go on his feet would look like this? You know, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. And the crazy thing about it is, Mel, I'm enjoying the journey, and I'm still you gonna walk. Too, like, it, it just, it just comes out like you. You are just so grateful every mom moment. Everything that you share is just so beautiful to see it. That you're, you're truly enjoying it, and and looking forward to like it's like what what gift is coming my way next? You know what I mean? Like, and, and it just, it, it tunes me back into, and I'm sure everyone that watches you, just that, that joyfulness, almost like a childlike joyfulness of just being alive and doing the things that you want to do. And it's, I, I love every post that you do and everything that you do. And I'm, I'm huge. I'm a, I'm big into like a connection. I get a connection through like working out and stuff. And you continue to do that. And, and again, that's where I see a lot of, you know, the comments as far as, you know, when I am there, you know, and man, the, the progression you have made in, in, you know, your physical abilities, that's impressive too. I'm just, I'm so excited for you. Thank you wow. so much. Thank you so what, much. What is it right now? What are your goals for, for film acting, for, for filmmaking or creation like I, I can't even like it's hard because i can't even say you know acting directing writing music you know where do you want to go in your career or your calling um and also you know like what direction do you see your life heading in great question um i am a believer of jesus christ that's who i am mm -hmm. I want my work to represent who I am. And when I write my scripts, I don't like writing scripts just to have something out there. I like to, to write realistic, true stories that can compel the heart and that can change lives. My goal is to be a Christian filmmaker, a faith-based, excuse me, a faith-based filmmaker that produces movies, sitcoms, reality shows, documentaries, cartoons, so on and so forth. I want to create every level of the arts from a faith-based standpoint, not pushing my faith down people's throat, but really just showing them the reality of the lifestyle that goes behind it. You know, um, most, most Christ followers have amazing testimonies. They weren't always in the faith, right? Like mm -hmm. they faced depression and they've seen death. They've seen molestation. Like they, they've gone through the same things that everyone else has gone through. But the, but the difference is there's a different perspective. And that's mm -hmm. why people look at me and say, how do you have so much joy? It's because I have a different perspective on life. I, I, I do. And I want to, I want to share that through my writing, through my producing. Um, I decided last year after I have only done stage plays my whole life, it's time to tap into film. And once again, I run everything past my wife. That's like confirmation. First of all, because she's my partner. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, because I share everything with her. That's just how we do. And third of all, I'm technically still a quadriplegic. 
So I can't do a lot of things on my own. I still need assistance. I still need help. I still need. So I have to make sure that when I'm booking things and when I'm on the road, and that I'm not neglecting home, that I'm not just in purpose and I'm taken away from my marriage. So I ran it past my wife and said, listen, stage plays, because we was getting back to producing stage plays in 2020. And I had one play booked for Phoenix and I had one play booked for Detroit. And the pandemic shut it down the week of the first rehearsal here in Phoenix. The whole pandemic just shut down the stage. So I said, you know what? That sucks. I still have the scripts. I said, but it's time. I think it's time to go into film. And my wife said, I think so too. And, I, and the question was not should I do film? The question was, how do I start? Mm. Even though I've been doing acting, producing, directing for years, stage play world is a whole different market, right? I'm in Phoenix. I've been in Phoenix for three years at that point. I didn't know anybody. So the question was, how do I get on sets? How do I get experience? Because I can't just say because I'm a writer, because I'm a director, I'm going to go and jump into film. I have to learn the lingo. I have to learn, you know, the, the industry standards, the look. How does my script need to look compared to a stage play script, to an industry movie script? And I had to ask myself, what all do you need to be confident to be a filmmaker like you are confident in being a stage play producer? And it was just experience. I need experience. Um, so I started calling up all these local companies. Hey, do you guys have a, a mentorship program? Can I come in and just gleam and just watch? And the pandemic was just coming to an end. So nobody had that in-person connection yet. Mm -hmm. And I had to remember, dude, you're an actor. You're an actor. Get roles. Get on these film sets. And just soak it in the same way you did in Detroit mm -hmm. as a stage play producer. Before I became a producer, I became a student to the game. Five, mm -hmm. six years. Nobody, it does, it does, nobody has to say it's going to take you this long, that long. It's different for everybody. That's how long it took me to perfect being a confident stage play producer. So I'm duplicating the same thing. So I started doing film 2021. Around this time last year, I got booked for my first film. I just went to all these private Facebook groups and auditions and actors wow. and Phoenix actors, Phoenix filming, and I just yep. grind, and I found a lot of low-budget stuff. One of them just so happened to be a Netflix movie. Like, what? And I'm on these sets, There's and I'm There's a lot of good nuggets there. here. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just soaking all this stuff in. It started with me just going to these private groups, and I started submitting for all these projects. I didn't have any footage on film. I didn't have this crazy resume on film. All I had was my experience from stage plays, my confidence that I can do this, and my confidence that the time is now. So I went no. to these groups and I started posting my picture and saying, hey, who's looking for wheelchair actors? And I started booking stuff. And I, that's kind of where I want to jump in because uh, I think a lot of people that follow are into acting and into a lot of things. And there are a lot of people that are hesitant and they kind of hold back and they're, they're trying to, you know, find. So what would you, what would you, um, you know, suggest to them if they're want, wanting to get into acting? So kind of paint that. I think the people that, you know, that, that fear barrier, they, they see people doing that, but like, maybe maybe describe some of the first interactions that you encountered in doing that maybe good and bad just to know that you know you do it people survive that kind of thing so what kind of interactions did you get in doing that absolutely immediately i was i just i had some head shots that i already took in and i had some full body shots the first thing they want to people want to make sure they do is anything that you do towards your portfolio has to be industry standard that there is a look, there's a, a feel that they're going for. When they see your resume, it has to flow a certain way. When they see your pictures, you can't send in selfies. You can't send in, I don't care how clean your iPhone is, dude. You can't send in the cleanest selfie you can find. You have to go and get a professional photographer. You have to invest in industry standard. Now, I learned that in the stage play world, so that wasn't new for me. Mm -hmm. So when I when I jumped on the private Facebook pages, it was my delivery. That's another thing. Don't look 
desperate and don't look like you don't belong here. Mm -hmm. You have to know this is what I want to do. There is no failure in this. And I'm confident that I can get on any set, not arrogant, confident that I can get on any set and I can rock with the best of them. But the reason why my confidence was there is because I spent 15 plus years in the stage play world in one of the toughest cities. The short has amazing gift, amazing talent, but they don't hold back. So get experience. What I, what I was not is I was not naive. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that my experience would automatically thrust me into position to just gain all these opportunities. So I, my mind was made up that I was going to take a year to do all of the low budget stuff that I could just so that I can build my resume. Mm -hmm. Cause that was one thing I didn't have. I had great pictures. I had um, the confidence, but I did not have a strong resume. So I, I said, let me book as many, not low budget, but whatever opportunities I can find locally. If it's low budget, cool. If it's a student film, cool. If it's a Netflix movie, great, awesome. But I was not naive to the fact that I needed experience in film, just like I needed experience in drama and, and in stage plays. So when I got to these private Facebook groups, I posted my professional looking picture, which I, I must say my photographer was awesome. The pictures looked great. And I said, hey, wheelchair actor Vincent Rutley, new to Phoenix. I would love to bring versatility to your film. That was it. I didn't say I hadn't done film before. I didn't say I'm really looking for a chance. Please give me an opportunity. New to Phoenix, not new mm -hmm. to film. Mm -hmm. New to Phoenix, looking for opportunities. Would love to bring versatility. So by that time, I, by the time I posted that mail, I had already done about seven, eight film auditions from self-tapes. Wow. And the wow. self-tape film auditions looked good as well. Yeah. It was all because of the standard. I wanted my I wanted everything I sent over to look like not 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 now he's not new. You just don't know him yet. Yeah. So I posted that picture and I got about five hundred responses in three days. This wow. is in a private wow. Facebook group. Not yeah, on my that's personal. A lot. And I mean all these people are like, dude, it was the look, it was the the, the message. I got calls. I got emails, I got inboxes, I got comments galore. And one of the producers just so happened, watch this, to be writing a show called Beans <laughs> and looking for an African-American wheelchair actor. Wow. This happened the, the night I posted the picture. I get an wow. inbox, hey. Vincent Rutley, my name is Jeffrey Bolt Barnfield. I just saw your post. Somebody shared your post with me. He wasn't even in the group. Wow. Yeah. He shared your post. <laughs> I'm talking about he crazy. Doesn't do he doesn't do social wow. media. Yeah. He doesn't do Instagram. So, <laughs> nothing. So I'm his representative right now. So if you look up for Jeffrey Barnfield, <laughs> call me. I'll, I'll get him for you. And he, he, he loved my look. He loved my confidence. He loved my post. And he said, I just so happened to have three scripts looking for a wheelchair actor. I would love for you to read them all and tell me what you think. And that started my relationship with him. I was always honest with him. He booked me for Beans as um, Carver, which is the fire chief. Which you the forget. Just, that was just the an best. awesome connection. Just have a, you know, just fun. It, it just worked. And <clears throat> that's one connection. I end up getting about five, six really strong film connections. Um, I got a lot of responses, but I got about five, six strong connections mm -hmm. from that one post. That one post. And that gave me... That's a, that's a ton. That's so yeah, much. Yeah, that's the, so so the percentage of the numbers. I think people get so caught up in saying, oh, you got a million followers. Yeah, but he never has a million likes. <laughs> he always has anywhere between... 100,000, maybe 150,000 responses because there's always a smaller percentage in the numbers. And that's yeah. another thing I have to learn, the numbers game when it comes to the industry. You're never going to get the same numbers and turnaround connections that you do in responses. Mm -hmm. So 
that same guy, right? And it's the same right? same with auditions, you know, same with same with auditions. There, it's gonna be such a small per such a small percentage. You get you get used to the number game and it'll mess with your head less. <laughs> it's just what it is. It's yeah. just what it is. Now, this doesn't happen normally. I'm gonna say this piece and then I'm gonna let you get to the next question. That same guy introduced me to my agent, gave me an opportunity to not only act in that sitcom I got casted for but to come on as a co-producer and to direct the pilot. And now I just joined the production team as a producer to a feature film that he has written and we're pitching that to Hollywood right now. That's one so guy, awesome. so all awesome. of these things happen through one guy. Now, just imagine how many other things that's going on in my life behind the scenes. And it's a <laughs> lot. But that's, that's what happened with one guy with me being confident to just put myself out there, I wasn't naive. I didn't think it was going to happen this fast. But I put myself in the position to gain traction and attention by the right person or the right people that's ultimately setting me up for a successful career. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of money. I've been doing film mail for one year now, and I've booked wow. seven movies. Two commercials, a, a sitcom, and uh, probably hundreds of auditions for voiceover work. And I got a few voiceover jobs as well. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think if people stop limiting themselves and thinking, well, I'm just an actor. No. Try voice acting. They get yeah. paid very quick. I think, I think just what you said right there, just if people stop limiting themselves. Yeah. Just stop limiting yourself. And, and whatever it is that you're looking at, whatever you're thinking about, the yeah buts, just take that out and just go full bore and have the confidence. Like you said, not new to film, new to Arizona. You know what I mean? Like going in with that confidence, people want to see that, especially on a professional set. They want to know that you're going to be able to perform. You're going to be able to come through. And if you're hesitating at all, they'll be able to, you know, sense that. And Absolutely. So, Yes, just stop limiting yourself. Go full out and, uh, you know, shoot for the stars, right? Yeah, just go. And I, I hate when people say, just go for it. You know, just do it. it. It's not you just going for it, just doing it, but it is. Like, mm -hmm. no one is going to know who you are and what you do if you don't promote yourself. Mm -hmm. Stop looking for an agent. Stop looking for a manager. That stuff comes with time. That stuff comes with experience. It automatically happens when you put yourself in the right position with the right people. It's all about relationships. I wasn't mm -hmm. looking to get signed with an, eight, with an agent. I was looking to get experience on set. Just so happened, the agent came with getting experience with the right people. So I, I, would, I, would, I would tell people that it's... it's get, Invest into yourself, get classes, mm. prepare to put yourself in the best situation by getting all the experience that you can. Get experience, get on sets. Experience doesn't mean, well, I did a, a movie with Brad Pitt. Come on, man. Like, really? You know, that, that's cool, you know, but get, get on sets, get in the mix of it, get in the middle, ask people questions. What, do you, what is your role? What does that do? What does that mean? What is that? And no, I'm not saying bug people. But find those pockets to have conversations and learn. And, and that's what I've been people, doing. You'll find the people that love talking and love telling you different things and love letting you help out. You, you'll find those people. You'll find the ones that Absolutely. don't necessarily, um, but you can still learn by watching them because a lot of them are just into their head and they're doing their thing and you can learn from them as well. It's, it's Absolutely. amazing. Yeah. Everybody on set, you can learn something from them. Yep. Awesome. Well, I, this has been absolutely amazing. And um, I, is there any, I mean, you've shared so much. Normally I ask, is there anything you want to share with anyone that's, you know, wanting to go into, into acting film or filmmaking? I don't know if there's anything else because you just, you gave so much there. Yeah. But if there's anything else, um, please do. Um, where, where can people, where do you want them to go to see you or to consume your stuff or to see, get in touch with you? What's the best place to, to hit you up at? I'm a social media guy. I comment on everything. I look at every comment. Um, and you make wonderful reels, by the way. <laughs> I'm, thank the you. I'm just now starting to do reels. I'm 
I'm not as good as most, but it's fun. Um, I love being able to show the behind the scenes. I love being able to give people a look at what it looks like to be a part of the industry. And um, one thing I want to share is that any viewer that's on here, I want them to know that there's only one thing that is certain about the industry, one thing that's guaranteed. And you know what that is, Mel? Yeah. That nothing is guaranteed. <laughs> I did not see that coming, but you're absolutely so right. One thing that's guaranteed is that nothing, and most of the time, that's a tough pill to swallow, and then sometimes it's a great thing. I've had auditions where they let me, oh, you'll just be the little extra guy standing in the background dancing, and I dance so good, I dance my way into the lead role. Kid you not. Kid you not. That was not certain. That was not guaranteed at all. I, and, and people can't go to set thinking, oh, I'm just an extra. Make sure you're groomed. Make sure you're looking great. You're feeling great. You never want to go on set thinking, oh, I'm just going to do this. I went to a set last year, around this time last year, and the production said, oh, student film, shot at ASU. And I didn't get my hair cut, Mel. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm just going to be an extra in a student film. Mm -hmm. I was excited about the opportunity to just get on set. Mm -hmm. But what I did not know was once I got on set, the director loved my, I don't know, presence so much. He said, let's put his wheelchair up front. Can we get a close up of you? And can we incorporate you into the scene? Can we get some dialogue with you? I said, absolutely. It just so happened to happen that way. But while they were getting this, the camera view set up, I asked one of the production assistants, I said, do you go to school here? He said, no. Why would you ask me that? I said, it's a student film. Like, most of the time it's a student film. The staff is a student. <laughs> he said, bro, this is a Netflix original movie. <laughs> what? He said, no, this I is a Netflix original movie. my hair. <laughs> I said, never again. Never. And they do that on purpose because they don't want the yeah, extra student one that spills the beans. They had been mm -hmm. shooting that movie for seven years. Mm -hmm. And the scene that they incorporated me in was the scene that wrapped the whole movie. They ended the movie here. And I, still, awesome. I, and I still can't share anything about the movie because it's not <laughs> out yet. So they're going on eight years producing this film. But never underestimate any opportunity. Mm -hmm. I didn't know yeah. that the one guy that commented, that, that reached out to my post, would be the one guy that would give me my first opportunity to direct and film and my first opportunity to be a producer on a, a huge feature film, a real feature film that we're in the middle of pitching to Hollywood right now. Why would you trust me to be a part of that? Because I came in confident. I knew that this is what I was called to do. I kept my head down and stayed humble and I learned everything I could. I went, once again, he gave me opportunity just because I wanted to get out there and have experience. So in one year, I go from being a guy that's starting off in film to being a producer on a, on a feature film and directing in film and acting in film. Like, this is crazy. But I just, just preparation, preparation, preparation. Yeah. Never underestimate. It only takes one person to see you. You could be on the live right now. Some of y'all just started following me. Thank you, thank you for, for following me, by the way. <laughs> I can follow you back and look at something on your page and say, man, you look like you can really... That, that's the look that I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Next, next thing you know, you got an inbox for me saying, hey, can I get a self-tape from you? I got a project going on in your area. I would love to see you on film. It's, mm -hmm. It just happens. You know, it's it not everybody's story, but it does happen. And, and it, you it's, know, it's that vibe, too. Like, the people that are, like you said, not desperate, but but driven by a purpose that knows where they're going that that goes across too and when you when you make something and you put it on your page and it catches people's eye especially other people that are like that you want to be catching the people's eye that are like that that have that same energy so absolutely, absolutely. i have one one more piece of advice and i'm done i have an i have two agencies now i have a local agency here in phoenix and then i have a a Hollywood style agency in, in LA. LA doesn't send me anything but A list projects. You know, if it's voiceover, it's Disney, it's 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 um um 
DreamWorks, if anything, you know, on that level. If it's if it's movies, it's with people that we watch every day. That's what they send me. So the simple fact that I have somebody that's confident in me enough to think that I could book something on their behalf, that's a huge thing. But I will say this. I just auditioned for um a really big, really, really big project. Um it's on it's straight to network TV. Um awesome opportunity. The actors that are starring in this project, I just saw him come off of one of the biggest TV shows that's out right now. And he this is his next project. I say all that to say I auditioned for it. I got a call back. Ooh. They loved me, but then I got an email two days ago saying that I didn't book the role. However, casting had this whole email saying, you know, we love this guy. We enjoyed him. We're not moving forward with him right now, but we will still consider him for this role and for other opportunities. We love him. Stay tuned. I didn't book the role, but I booked the room. Mm, yes. I didn't book the room, and I was, I'm was i a little sad about that, but I booked the room. My audition got so far that all the decision makers saw it, and sometimes you never get to know who saw it and what they think about it. You just get nothing. They don't respond when you don't book a role, but the simple fact that I got a response like that from the casting director and the production team it means I am once again setting myself up and putting myself in the right space to go out here and get that one role that changes my life forever. I'm not bragging. This is just how the industry works. Mm -hmm. And once again, most of the time, you just don't get a response. So when you book you really the role, like nothing. It's, it's a win. crickets, and you're just like, huh, and then your mind can go and fill in all the fun stuff. So I'm it's happy like, you got yeah. that. <laughs> and, and it's hard not to ponder on that role and not to, you know, see yourself in that position, but you move on to the next thing. Yeah. My agent sent me that email sure. saying, this is what they said. You know, this is a good look for us. And then they sent me another audition. We moved right along to the next thing. Yeah. That's just how it works. So I just want to encourage everybody, if you're an actor, if you're an inspiring actor, actress, what, if you want to be a writer or producer or whatever, just get all the experience that you can get and you're going to continually run into the right situations that set you up for success. It's going to happen. That, that's a promise. But you can't give up on the no's. You can't mm -hmm. let the no's and the maybe later and ah, you can't let those deter you from going after what you know you're called to do. You just can't. If I would have gave up on the industry because I was in a wheelchair, I, I have no idea where I would be right now. I wouldn't be on this call. I wouldn't be in Phoenix. I wouldn't have just had my directorial film debut. I wouldn't have two agents. None of this stuff would happen if I just sat back and waited on the fact that I want to be on my feet while I'm doing it. Don't wait on anything. Mm. Go in right where you are even i don't have the money to invest that's okay you don't have to have the money to get on a student film set you don't have to have the money to you know to get on this set and get that set once you get on a couple of sets you know get a couple of extra jobs and they're paying you you know da -da 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 a day take that money get you some photos make sure that everything looks like it's industry standard and industry quality so that nobody has to swipe left on you because you don't look like you belong you belong here so you, yeah. you don't feel like you belong here his lighting is bad swipe left his pictures are terrible swipe left he doesn't have a resume swipe left make sure all of your stuff lines up with industry back, standards. Back in the day, the staples had to be just right for your headshot to the resume. Everything. The staples weren't in the right spot. They your, your look and your presentation represents your professionalism. And if it doesn't fit industry quality standards, the first thing they're going to think is, we don't have time to train this guy, to train this girl to be industry standard. We don't want to get you on set, and we got to direct you and produce you, and we have to train you at the same time. That's too much. Yeah. It's too much. And we need people that's already ready 
So just everything has to look like it's ready. It has to feel like it's ready. You might be ready, but you might have some really bad looking stuff, but clean up everything, get everything ready, prepare to let them know I belong here. And one thing I like that you pointed out in your, that you, you, I see the, the habit in you uh, is, is as you're getting ready to do something, you start, you ask yourself the question and questions are such a wonderful way to get yourself moving. You know, it's like uh, where you want to go. Okay. What do I need to do? When you ask yourself that suddenly the steps appear before you, so Absolutely. just like Vincent does ask yourself the questions, just, just come up with a set of questions that when you're stuck, say, what do I need to do next? Who do yeah. I need to contact? What should I do? You know, and, and yeah, you, you do that. I did this throughout your whole story. You start asking questions. And even if that question isn't really where you need to go, it got you moving to find the right question to do the right thing. So absolutely. You're an absolute inspiration and just wonderful for all of us to follow. And I'm so excited for you. I can't wait until the things that you can share, you share. And oh, just, man. just for the, just everything that you have coming out. And, and of course, you know, I want to see beans once it's finally done. I'm happy it's in the can and, and uh, oh, yes. uh, Angel's working on it now. So that's great. Um, and we've got more people coming up. I've got, uh, who do I, I have? Keely, who's from beans. She's one of the Keely stars Bright. Keely's going to be on. Let me see. I've got her coming. I think it's next Tuesday, August 30th. I've got David Rice booked, which is funny because like I was following David for the longest time. And he started like more and more catching my eye of doing stuff. And then yeah. I was so happy when I found out who's on Beans. I was like, yeah, I finally get to meet him. So he'll be up uh, September 6th. We've got Joshua, Jamie, and um, they're all to be determined. I was waiting on some news today to find out when I can book them. So I will be getting in touch with them, getting times for them. And Jeffrey, I don't think he's on Instagram yet. I told him, don't worry about Instagram. I'll we'll find get him, him. live. We'll, we'll get him. We're going to get him on. We're going to get him on Instagram. That's so amazing. You have an awesome lineup. That is going to be, I'm going to watch every single one of them. I walked on set and I'm like, I want everyone to come on the show. <laughs> it's so great. So, yes. And this is Thank great you what so you're doing. I, I wanted to just take a minute and let you know that you, you helped make that set what it was. Um, Andrew <laughs> Ruiz, the Arizona filmmaker of the year, came to me and said, "I've never seen a set this amazing and this organized and this clean. I just haven't seen it yet." And the people that you guys chose, you reached out to me um, a few different times, and then the night before the shoot, I got on with you, and I'm like, "Yo, I absolutely can't love to thank you for just your heart being willing." And then I fell in love with your spirit and your servitude. You helped me out a ton. I didn't feel like I had to go look for anything. And you were right there by my side without making me feel like somebody was breathing off my neck. It was just a perfect balance of what I personally needed as a directorial debut. I, I promise you, you helped. Because I was in the right headspace, and, and it stemmed from your assistance, you played a bigger role than you could ever imagine um, making that masterpiece happen. And, I can't wait to get you back on set. I can't wait to work with you again, whether you're acting, um, whether I'm coming out to where you are to do something for you or with you, whatever it is. I love working with good people. That makes the experience great. It can be a great project with some really snobby people. And that sucks. So fun. Yeah. When you have a great project with great people, it makes it so awesome. So you sharing that moment with me, my family and my friend for life. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for having me there. It was it was amazing. So thank you, and I look forward to being on set with you again. I really, really do. It was, it was it's coming amazing. really, really soon. Man. Awesome. Really well, soon. thank you so much. Say hi to your wifey for me, and um, I'll get with you offline. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I appreciate it, and uh, thank have you, a beautiful day. Bye, Vincent. Love. Love you. <laughs>